Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning I bid to many Rohaya binti Yusuf. My name is Karim Hassan binti Mazir and today I would like to present my research study on the adoption of the Zakat method in Malaysia and the compliance towards Sharia Governance Framework 2019 by Islamic financial institutions. I'll start the presentation with the introduction of Zakat and Sharia compliance. As we know, in Islam, Zakat is one of the most critical responsibilities. It is a third of the pillar of Islam. Its primary goals are to promote balance, socio-economic progress, as well as to provide the giver spirit and bring him closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while also instilling emotions of love, solidarity and charity toward humanity in them. It has the potential to ease the suffering of millions of people. Zakat is not simply giving charity. It is much more than that. In essence, zakat is a portion of one's wealth that meets the threshold and is rightfully distributed to those who have a right to it. As for Sharia governance framework, it is the basis of efficient corporate governance of Islamic financial institutions. The establishment of an effective Sharia governance structure will strengthen public confidence in their integrity, management and business operations of the Islamic financial institutions. Therefore, through this study, we will be able to identify the method used by Islamic banks in Malaysia for their zakat competition. Secondly, to make a comparison of the duties of zakat competition among these Islamic banks. Thirdly, to examine whether these Islamic banks pay the zakat accordingly to Sharia requirements and the most recommended by the De Department of Islamic Development Malaysia, Jakim. And lastly, to analyze the effectiveness of the adoption of the Sharia Committee policy by adhering to Islamic Financial Services Act 2030 by these Islamic financial institutions in Malaysia. Moving on to the next part, which is literature review. According to Samsuwati Zuhar 2018, all Muslims are required to pay zakat. Licensed Islamic bank or any banks embedded in the red Islam are a match with the obligatory act to pay zakat. There are no exceptions to not paying zakat. Furthermore, it was said that zakat is applicable to all phases of production, whether the products are raw materials, work in progress, or finished goods. Islam also believes that businesses should give back to society through zakat in order to achieve social justice and uphold their social responsibility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Moreover, study undertaken by Siti Normala and Abdi 2011, Islamic banks should disclose their payment as well as disclose its statement of sources and uses the first item included in the benchmark of the study is whether the Islamic bank is liable to pay zakat or the owners of the Islamic bank have to pay it. However, the result of the study reveals that all Islamic banks do not disclose the details of competition zakat. This demonstrates that the 10 Islamic banks in Malaysia's ethical disclosure standard has fallen short overall. During the completion of this study, I used both primary and secondary data collection based on observation of the Islamic bank sources, data provided, journals, and online resources. It was done by reviewing all the 10 Islamic bank annual report, corporate governance, and other reliable sources. After reviewing the information needed, I prepared a sheet checklist to compute the data. The checklist is divided into two sections, which are information on zakat payment and information on the adoption of a Sharia committee policy. The population of the study is all Islamic banks in Malaysia. However, only 10 Islamic banks are selected for the study. Afterward, the finding of the study is that 7 out of 10 Islamic banks adopted the method of zakat computation as recommended by Jakim, which are the adjusted working capital method and adjusted growth method. Based on the finding, I conclude that most of the Islamic banks in Malaysia adopted the two recommended methods of zakat computation by Jakim. The other three Islamic banks that did not adopt the recommended method are Bank Mu'amalat Malaysia Berhad, Public Islamic Bank and Hong Leong Islamic Bank Berhad. Bank Mu'amalat Malaysia Berhad computes the zakat calculation by adopting shareholders' funds growth, while Public Islamic Bank Berhad uses the method of profit and loss. As for Hong Leong Islamic Bank Berhad, it calculates the zakat by using the net assets method. The reason why the other three Islamic banks did not opt to choose the method recommended by Jakim for its zakat calculation is to pay less, less zakat. However, the comparison of the detailed zakat computation between these 10 Islamic banks cannot be done since they all do not disclose the information. As for the adoption of Sharia Committee policy, this study managed to compute that all Islamic banks instill such efficient structures 
controls and processes along with its activities of the business. The qualification of Sharia committee members, including the chairman in line with Sharia Governance Framework 2019 for all 10 Islamic banks. Committee members appointed come from different backgrounds of study and the academic qualification that they hold is suitable for them to be included in the Sharia committee members. In addition, most Islamic banks held 9 to 12 meetings in a year which means they have exceeded the requirements of Sharia governance to hold meetings at least once every two months. The community members also have fulfilled the requirements where Sharia community members must attend at least 75% of the Sharia community meetings held in each financial year and must not appoint another person to attend or participate in Sharia community meetings on their behalf. To sum up the findings of the study, I can conclude most of the Islamic banks in Malaysia very adhere to the Islamic law by paying zakat for the businesses that they run. 7 out of 10 Islamic banks follow the method that was recommended by Jakim and the other 3 Islamic banks that are adopting other methods that have been approved by the Sharia committee. In fact, there is no wrong for the business to pay zakat by using other methods other than those recommended by Jakim. Next, the study also found that all the Sharia committee that has been appointed are qualified as they are all very experienced in the Sharia field and the background of the study for all chairmen and the members is very high profile. This is because most of them completed their, completed their study abroad in the Sharia field. This is important as they are the ones who will ensure all the activities of Islamic banks are in line with Sharia compliance. Hence, this concludes that all 10 Islamic banks adhere to the Sharia government framework 2019. On the other hand, I'd like to suggest for all Islamic banks in Malaysia to disclose the details of zakat computation so that the outsiders are aware of their zakat payment. If they disclose the zakat computation, it will boost the expectation and interest outsiders to invest in them. Thus, it is important for financial analysts and others to examine and balance the zakat stated in the financial accounts. I also would like to suggest to related authorities to impose a higher zakat percentage on businesses, especially toward Islamic banks, to upgrade the life of the community and will promote stable socio-economic justice and equitable distribution. That's all from me. Thank you for listening.